Aloha, my name is Awali, and today we are here in the Moku of Kipuhulu. And I am Grace Aina. Kipuhulu Moku is on the southeast side of Maui, about 10 miles southwest of Hana Town. Aloha, I'm Malia Kualaau. Kipuhulu Moku is a remote district that extends from Pua'alu'u Stream in the northeast to Kalepa Stream in the southwest, and from Halakala Mountain to the sea. And I am Tu'upua. Today we'll be talking more about the Kipuhulu Ohana and how their Malama Ikekai program continues to perpetuate the Lavaia Pono practices. The Kipuhulu Ohana was founded in 1995 by Uncle Mike Min, Uncle John Lin, and Auntie Tweedy Lin. They are dedicated to the cultural sustainability of the Kipuhulu Moku in East Maui. They envision families working together to preserve and enhance traditional cultural practices. They accomplish this through culturally based agriculture and resource management projects from Mauka to Makai. Kipahulu's Ohana's original project is Kapahu Living Farm, a traditional Hawaiian wetland taro farm managed through a partnership agreement with Haleakala National Park. Ancient lo'ikalo have been restored and other canoe plants like ulu and maia are also grown. Poi and other products are processed at their Kipahulu kitchen for distribution to the community. They also host educational programs for schools and community groups in the lo'ikalo. Aloha and good morning. Uh, my name is, they call me Auntie Tweedy and my husband's name is Uncle John. We are part caretakers of the Kapahu Living Farm in Kipahulu. So we have actually been here maybe almost 30 years. In this is actually Papa Uluwana is like the name of the land piece coming up here. And straight ahead of me is a Heiau. That Heiau is called Napua. It is known to be one of the most powerful Heiau in Kipuhulu. Reason is because it's high. So when you're looking down, you can, there are Heiaus that are connected, like we have Kanikawila. Then you can see the ocean. You can see Alenui Haha. On clear days, you can also see the big island. Our project, our idea was to open up the farm and restore taro patches. And this was done before it became under the National Park's jurisdiction. So we created that nonprofit back in 95, because before that, it was all kukua. So the ohana has grown from a family, and now when you, you're growing out into the community, so we have embraced that ohana style to teach what is what we have to do to malama this place, work in the mud, plant the right things, the taro right, make sure the water goes in, make sure the water is cold enough, make sure we don't have invasive things. Down the road then we found, hey, there was a lot of mental issues, health issues. So this is why we tried it with the taro to teach all those things, eat poi, eat the leaves. So all those things play a part in the, the health, um, spiritual connection. The goal here for Kipuhulu has always been Mauka to Makai. I would like Uncle to maybe cover the science part of all that. So the, the, what we found the loy get a lot to do with the life that comes from the, the ocean. And we find that a lot of the fishes, they come in, the moe hatch almost all the same time during the summer. And they come up, the, the eggs, the babies all come upstream. Even the opals come into the loi. And they go back down in. The fresh water, they create the limo ele ele that the manini, all these fish feed on. So it's very important for the stream and the ocean. So we, and, the, and the OP get a lot to do with the fresh water. And almost all the, the sea life in the ocean, when you get big flash flood come down, that's what feed the ocean. Call this place Kapahu, it's named after the Pahu, the drum. And when you get flash flood coming down, you can hear the sound of the, the flash flood. For instance, right in front of the pools, we call one place Pipi Alepo. That's where all the rubbish come out of the river and they end up piles up in Pipi Alepo. It means like dirty water. That's always dirty all year long. Then that's all the food that for the moe, for the, all the fish and the shrimps. And this has been going on for years that we're trying to educate each other on that, yeah. So what we're doing is trying to protect the ocean and educate the people. The hardest one to educate is the state. 
and to get them to come out, come with us and learn the science of what's, what we're doing. And they can help document it. As a part of the Ahupua approach to resource management, Kipuhulu Moku focuses on shoreline and near shoreline stewardship. In 2012, they developed their Kipuhulu Moku Malama Ikikai Community Action Plan with input from fishermen, culture practitioners, scientists, and other community members. This plan proposed creating an Opihi Rest Area or a Community Substance Fishing Area or a CBSFA in Kipuhulu Moku. The Opihi Rest Area is a section of shoreline next to Halakala National Park from the mouth of Oheo Stream to Kukui Bay. It is a voluntary no-take zone or a Pihi Sanctuary. The rest area allows the Pihi populations to recover and spill over to surrounding areas which increases the overall number of Opihi. Opihi population surveys conducted by Kipuhulu Ohana show an increase in Opihi populations. Since the rest area has been in place, especially down current from the rest area, this shows that the rest area has been a successful resource management strategy. The unsustainable harvest of the marine resources leads to decreased productivity and diversity. Unsustainable practices include harvesting too much, harvesting undersized or reproductive individuals, and harvesting species out of season or in spawning times. Hawaii's CBSFA designation can be more effective than state-level management because they focus on local communities and protecting their natural resources. CBSFA protects traditional Hawaiian subsistence practices, not just fish abundance. The Kipuhulu Ahana believes that with CBSFA's management, it can help reduce unsustainable fishing practices and allow fish populations to recover, thus leaving future generations with these marine resources.